name is Gemma and today I'll be delivering a presentation on human empathy. During this presentation I'll be covering a wide variety of topics involving human immunity as seen on this slide. An infection can occur when microorganisms enter the body through a cut in the skin or mucous membrane such as the mouth or nasal passage. Bacteria single-celled organisms causing infections such as cellulitis, strep throat, UTIs and TB. Viruses are much smaller than bacteria and are non-living as they require a host living cell to replicate. Viral infections can vary in severity from a common cold to HIV and AIDS. Fungi okay, occur mostly on the skin surface causing infections such as athlete's foot and ring man, but can also cause more serious infections to the lungs if inhaled such as histoplasmosis. Infections such as malaria, toxoplasmosis, geriardiasis and scabies are all caused by parasites. Transmission of infections can occur through direct contact via coughs, sneezes, bites and scratches, indirect contact when an individual touches an object where germs such as bacteria have spread through coughs or sneezes and then become infected themselves. Insect bites can transmit infections via vectors. This is common in mosquito bites and malaria and also tick bites and Lyme disease. Consumption of contaminated food and water can cause bacteria such as E. coli and salmonella to spread to our digestive system. Our bodies have three lines of defence against pathogens causing infection. The first two lines cover the non-specific innate immune system and the third line is a specific response to infection. The innate immune system responds to all pathogens in the same way and is present from birth. The integumentary system is the first line of defence against pathogens and covers the physical and chemical barriers that prevent pathogens from entering the body. The skin is the largest organ in the body and is split into three layers the epidermis, the dermis, and the subcutaneous layer. The epidermis impedes the penetration of microbial organisms, chemical irritants, and toxins, inhibits water loss, and absorbs and blocks solar and ionised radiation. Other physical barriers to infection are the mucous membranes that line the surface of the eyes, ears, nose, sinuses, mouth, throat, GI tract, respiratory tract, and ure urogenital tract and vaginal tract. The mucous membranes coating the nasal cavity and airways trap pathogens which are removed via coughing or sneezing. The rhythmic movement of the cilia inside of the lungs also removes trapped particles by sweeping them up and away. Chemical barriers are an effective defence mechanism against pathogens and can be in tears, saliva, mucus, GI tract and the vaginal tract. Lysosome is an enzyme found in tears which protects the eyes from infection. The gastrointestinal system produces acidic and alkaline secretions in order to prevent infection in the form of stomach acid, pancreatic, pancreatic enzymes, bile and intestinal secretions. Peristalsis causes the shedding of the cells of the intestines which remove harmful and dead microorganisms. The vaginal tract contains lactobacilli, which are bacteria that metabolise glycogen. The acidic environment also prevents the growth of harmful bacteria whilst maintaining a healthy level of protective bacteria. The second line of defence begins when damage to the body or infection occurs. The innate immune system responds to the chemical signals released by activated macrophages and mast cells at the injury site, triggering an, an inflammatory response. Blood vessels around the infection site dilate, causing an increased blood flow and enabling a stronger immune system response. The development of gaps in the surrounding cell walls allows fluid, antimicrobial proteins and clotting elements to move from the blood to the infection site. Chemokines are then released by cells which attract more macrophages. Neutrophils and macrophages then use a process called phagocytosis to destroy and engulf pathogens and cell debris. During the inflammatory response, tissues in the infected area become red, swollen and painful, and this continues until the infection or injury has healed. Pus may also be visible and is a result of the immune system's defence against an infectious agent, with the majority of pus consisting of dead neutrophils. Phagocytosis is the process in which phagocytes engulf and destroy damaged, defective or invasive cells. The inflammatory response triggers monocytes to differentiate into macrophages, which recognise and target cells to destroy. A phagosome is a vesicle that forms around a microbe by the cell membrane, where the ingested microbe or dead cells are then engulfed. The phagosome then fuses with the lysosome, which is a specialised vesicle containing digestive enzymes to aid in the disintegration of the contents of the phagosome, forming a phagolysosome. Acquired immunity is not present at birth, but learned through exposure to environmental pathogens. 
Antigens are the parts of the pathogen that tells the body it's being attacked. They can be any type of molecule, such as a protein, carbohydrate, nucleic fat, acid or fat. Antigens present on pathogens entering the body are detected as non-self, which stimulates antibody production. Acquired immunity determines an effective attack strategy for antigens and develops immunological memory cells of antigens previously encountered, which creates specific immunity. Cells of the acquired immune system are predominantly B and T cells and natural killer cells. In neutrophils are the most common white blood cell type and the first cell to reach an infected area where they use phagocytosis to destroy pathogens. They attach to the blood vessel wall to block access of pathogens to the bloodstream. The largest white blood cell uh, type is monocytes, but they are less common than neutrophils and lymphocytes. They differentiate into macrophages after leaving the bloodstream where they use phagocytosis to remove dead cells from the body. Eosinophils are rare in the bloodstream. They use uh, large granules to aid in acid cellular functions by releasing toxins to kill pathogens. A high eosinophil count in the blood indicates an allergic reaction. Basophils are the rarest white blood cell type and they secrete anticoagulants and antibodies and they act against hypersensitivity reactions in the bloodstream. They contain histamine which dilates blood vessels allowing more immune cells to reach the infected site rapidly. Lymphocytes play a significant role in the humoral immune system via antibody production. They are present in lymphatic tissues such as the spleen, tonsils and lymph nodes. B cells make up 10 to 15% of lymphocytes and they are responsible for producing and secreting antibodies into the circulatory system. They activate T cells and present antigens to the T cells. T cells account for 80% of lymphocytes and destroy all problem cells. Helper T cells regulate all immune functions and stimulate other T cells to grow and attack. Cytotoxic T cells defend the body against viruses by releasing perforin into infected cells, causing them to self-destruct. Suppressor T cells regulate the functions of cytotoxic and helper T cells to prevent excessive damage to the body's own tissues. Immunoglobulins are antibodies made up of proteins bound to antigens. They play a key role in the immune system response by targeting infection, signaling immune cells, neutralizing toxins, removing antigens and stimulating phagocytes. As you can see in the image, immunoglobulins are typically made up of four chains arranged in a Y shape, with molecules comprising two lighter and two heavier chains. There are five types of immunoglobulins. IgG is the most abundant, is one of the major activators of the complement pathway. They stimulate a direct attack on foreign particles. It is also the only type of antibody that is transferred across the placenta during pregnancy to, for protection of the unborn child. IgA is the second most common and is vital for the cellular defence of mucosal body surfaces. A lack of this type of antibody causes major infections in areas like the mouth, throat and lungs. The structure of IgM uh, varies significantly, it's made up of five normal immunoglobulins joined at the base. This antibody is the first to be synthesised in the antibody response. IgE is the largest antibody but presents only in low levels of healthy individuals. They increase in response to parasitic infections and allergic reactions. IgD is uncommon with unknown functions in the immune system but is believed to function as an antigen reception, a receptor on B cell surfaces. Antigens are molecules found on all cells and allow the immune system to distinguish between self and non-self cells. If the immune system recognises the antigens as self, then it does not attach red blood cells. If the antigens are recognised as non-self, then the adaptive immune system will respond via B and T cell activation. The immune response to foreign antigens can vary depending on the similarity of antigens and self-antigens. Infectious antigens presenting vastly different to human antigens will initiate the strongest immune system response. The major histocompatibility complexes work alongside the human leukocyte antigen gene complex. MHC1 are molecules expressed onto the surface of all nucleated cells and present self-antigens and non-self pathogen antigens to the affected T cells. MHC2 molecules are only present on the surfaces of macrophages, dendritic cells and B cells. They provide the same extracellular cellular presentation mechanism as MHC1 by presenting antigens from pathogens which are endocytosed by B cells and phagocytes. The antigen fragments presented by MHC2 molecules on the surface of immune cells are recognised by T cells which then target any cell expressing that specific antigen. 
the failure of to tolerance can occur if the process of apoptosis in self-reacting lymphocytes is not achieved. B and T cells are then produced that may become activated against cell antigens, causing the basis of an autoimmune disease. Hypersensitivity is a pathological immune response caused by repeated exposure to the same antigen, whereby the immune response is directed against self antigens. The positive feedback systems are intrinsic to aspects of the immune response with failures causing chronic hypersensitivity diseases to occur. These are divided into four major categories based on their underlying cause. Type 1 is the immediate sensitivity. Type 2 is antibody mediated sensitivity. Type 3 is immune complex mediated hypersensitivity. And type 4 is cell mediated hypersensitivity. Transplantation is the process of transferring cells, tissues or organs from a living or deceased person to a living person whose organs are damaged or unsustainable for life. The immune system is the greatest barrier to organ transplant uh, success due to the non-self antigens presented on the transplanted organ being recognised as foreign by the recipient's immune system, which causes rejection. Medical professionals reduce the likelihood of organ rejection by closely matching the antigens between the organ donor and recipient via tissue typing. Monoclonal antibodies are also given during and after surgery to block specific T cells responsible for organ rejection. Without this medicine, the immune system response will destroy the foreign tissue. There are three types of rejection in organ transplants. Hyperacute rejection occurs within minutes when antigens are completely unmatched, such as the wrong blood type being transfused. Tissues may be removed immediately and is life-threatening. Acute rejection is common as all recipients will experience some degree of rejection and usually occurs between the first week and three months after transplantation. Chronic rejection occurs over many years and is caused by the body's constant immune response slowly damaging transplanted tissues or organs. Signs and symptoms of rejection vary depending on the organ or tissue that has been transplanted, as you can see on this slide. Immune system disorders can affect many areas of the body, having long-term detrimental effects on the individual. Rheumatoid arthritis is a long-term autoimmune disorder causing pain, stiffness and swelling in the joints, usually affecting the hands, feet and wrists. It is categorised as an immune complex mediated hypersensitivity, where complexes of antibodies and antigens deposit in the vascular walls or other tissues causing an inflammatory response. Treatment usually involves medication in the form of immunosuppressants, steroids and non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Severe cases, surgery may be considered in the form of uh, synovectomy, tendon repair surgery or joint replacement surgery. Lupus is also a long-term autoimmune disorder classified as a type 3 hypersensitivity reaction of the immune system response, whereby inflammation causes a vast variety of symptoms ranging from mild to life-threatening. It is often treated via oral and topical medications such as immunosuppressants, anti-inflammatory drugs and steroid creams. Lupus can be difficult to diagnose as symptoms often mimic other autoimmune disorders and can vary significantly from each person. Acquired immunity is the immunity gained by pro the production of antibodies for a specific disease. Active immunity can occur naturally or artificially. Natural active immunity develops from environmental expo exposure to a pathogen causing a specific disease. The T cells attach to the pathogen presenting it to the B cells, which then create an antibody that attacks and destroys the pathogen. Immunological memory occurs providing long-term immunity against the pathogen. Artificially induced active immunity describes the development of immunity against a pathogen via artificial and intentional exposure to foreign antigens through vaccination. The immune response follows the same process as that of a natural active immunity by stimulating the production of antibodies and memory cells. After the vaccination, if pathogens are present in the body, then the immune system will already have the antibodies required to bind to the pathogen to destroy it before infectious symptoms occur. Passive immunity occurs when antibodies are trans transferred naturally from person to person. Naturally acquired passive immunity occurs during pregnancy when IgG antibodies are pass passed through the placenta to the fetus and during breastfeeding. These antibodies provide limited protection for the child for up to four to six months after birth. Artificially induced passive immunity is acquired through injection or transfusion of antibodies from another person. The antibodies then fight off infection and protection will last for a few weeks. In this process, there is no involvement of the person's own immune system. 
A vaccination exposes the body's immune system to a weakened version of a pathogen, which stimulates the white blood cells to produce antibodies, providing immunological memory for that specific pathogen. A vaccine may contain live, attenuated or inactivated pathogens, harmless fragments and toxins produced by pathogens, all of which are recognised as antigens by the immune system. The vaccinated person will not develop the specific disease, but may incur mild side effects. The primary response describes the time in which antigen identification occurs by B lymphocytes and results in antibody production by plasma cells. Immunological memory cells then produce and upon the secondary response can re recognise the pathogen. This enables the rapid production of a higher quantity of antibodies which fight off the infection before symptoms become apparent. Herd immunity is the concept that if a, percent a high percentage of population is vaccinated then it significantly reduces the spread of an infectious disease by providing protection to vulnerable people such as infants, the elderly and immunosuppressed individuals. Herd immunity is vitally important on a global scale as diseases are no longer geographically limited as our connections across the world have increased over time. There are many issues faced in providing herd immunity such as antigenic variability of pathogens, the different variations of pathogens presenting different antigens and individuals within a community not wanting to be vaccinated due to ethical religious reasons or concerns over side effects. Epidemiologists use the basic reproduction number to calculate the percentage of individuals in the community to be vaccinated to provide herd immunity. They look at how many people in an unprotected population one infected person could pass the disease on to. So transmissibility and severity of infection can affect the threshold of providing herd immunity through vaccinations, as some demographics may suffer more than others. Vaccination programmes in the UK are run through GP practices, providing shingles vaccinations, pneumonia vaccinations and childhood immunisations such as MMR and whooping cough. Secondary schools host HPV vaccination clinics and community pharmacies provide annual influenza vaccinations and COVID-19 vaccinations. Travel vaccinations are also available through pharmacies and private clinics to protect those travelling to different countries against disease. The factors affecting the uptake of vaccination programmes can include the accessibility of vaccine providing services, individual religious ethical uh, beliefs, concerns over the safety and side effects of vaccines and resistance to involvement with such programmes, um, also known as anti-vaxxers. An article published in The Lancet in 1998 ad claimed a link between the MMR vaccine and the development of autism. This research has since been discredited by two larger studies, concluding no such link. Unfortunately, this has led to a decrease in children being vaccinated against MMR, which has led to an increased infection rate of measles, mumps and rubella. Antibiotics do not cure viral diseases, so immunisations are our best defence against serious, preventable and deadly contagious diseases. One of the largest benefits of vaccination is the eradication of disease. Due to worldwide immunisation programmes, it was declared that smallpox had been eradicated as of 1979 and Europe has had no cases of polio since 2002. Childhood mortality has also decreased significantly since the introduction of vaccinations against measles, mumps, rubella, polio and whooping cough. Whilst these infection, infectious diseases still exist, vaccination against them provides greater protection against complications from infection, such as pneumonia, meningitis and encephalitis. In the UK, the first vaccination was for measles in 1960, with a later introduction of the MMR vaccination in 1968. Public Health England has estimated that 20 million cases and 4,500 deaths in the UK have been averted since the MMR vaccination introduction. On a global scale, immunisation programmes have aided in a multitude of areas such as extended life expectancy, cancer protection, savings in healthcare and reduced development of antibiotic resistance. That concludes my presentation. Thank you for listening.